back to another episode of Blue Glow Electronics. I um, thought I'd show you something interesting today. So this is another part of my little um, workshop here. It's basically just my PC setup. As you can see I've got a Samsung monitor here and a matching Samsung monitor here. Um, and I got a slight issue. Let me show you what that is. Um, as you can see this monitor is already on. The icons are nice and uh, bright. But when I turn this one on I get this uh, flickering <laughs> of the icons and I hear this high, extremely high pitched whine and this goes on for a good uh, 10 to 15 minutes before it uh, it finally stops here so let me show you what we're going to do about that okay first thing I did here was lay down a tile on my workbench just a uh, plain white well, something to keep the uh, the workbench in case there was some some dirt or something on it, uh, piece piece of sand or something small, keep it from scratching your monitor. And then let's uh, let's lay the monitor over here. Yeah. Okay, so got the monitor laying over here, and uh, if you notice, there's three screws that take off the base here. There's um, a couple screws around this thing that you'll have to look for. Sometimes they'll hide one underneath of a uh, sticker here, but have to kind of feel around for maybe an indentation, which I'm not finding one there. Um, same here, didn't find one there. Anyway, I've got my dog scratching over here. Quit it, Jack. So, anyway, what, what happened was I was in my office one day and, and you know, it was quiet. When I first walked in here and turned the lights on, I heard this high-pitched sound. And I, my son was with me and I said, what is that noise? And, you know, it's just like super high-pitched little squeal in my ear. But it was one of those sounds that you couldn't really identify where it was coming from. We kept walking around the room. Where is this coming from? And um, finally, we um, I realized when I turned my monitor on that this, the high-pitched sound went away. But at that point in time, the, the icons weren't flickering. It was just the high-pitched sound coming from the capacitor starting to break down. So, um, you know, being a... It's like a what do they say a painter um, or a construction guy is the last the last house that they paint or work on is their own um, similar story here the last last pieces of electronics to get restored or fixed around here would be the owner of the shop so um, I ignored it for about a month um, the little high pitched sound and then all of a sudden started the uh, the icons flashing when I turned it on. And it would take, you know, at first it took a minute for it to warm up and stop, and then it took four minutes and five minutes. Finally, it's gotten to where it takes 10 or 15 minutes. So, um, it's time to recap this thing. Let's, let's dive into it. I'm going to remove these screws I showed you and get inside this thing. Okay. So, if you'll notice, these monitors were manufactured June of 2007. I bought these off of Newegg.com way back when. Got them for about $179 a piece. Um, they're two millisecond refresh rate, so they're really good monitors. Um, and I will tell you that I had this exact same thing happen to the other one oh, about a year ago. So um, I, knew, I knew what was going on. I knew what needed to be done. Um, and honestly, you know, you can't buy a much better monitor than a two millisecond refresh rate. So even though these things now are eight years old, uh, there's really not much better out there. I, I will tell you the newer ones um, will have a little less bulky frame, um, a little, little thinner chassis, which makes it uh, lighter. But um, as far as quality, these are rock solid, and they've got I've got no dead pixels, so uh, really nothing to complain about here. Anyway, got the uh, got the screws out, and what happens is you can see it starts to come loose down here at this end where the screws are at. This end has no screws on it. So what I've been doing is just using a screwdriver and kind of working my way along. As you can see, I've got it open thus far. And the way these things work is they just kind of, from here on, it's kind of a snap together. Remember the old snap together type models? Um, that's what happens. And uh, once, you get, once you get there, the uh, thing kind of comes apart and you can take the cover off. Um, and boy, then does the fun begin. <laughs> um, 
lots of layers, I would say, of really thin sheet metal that you just have to kind of take apart one at a time until you get to the board inside of here. And once you get to the board inside, then it's just a matter of uh, replacing. I, get to, I typically replace every capacitor in there. Um, one of them is going to be the bad one. It's just not worth your time trying to figure out which one because if you do that and then uh, six months later another one decides to go out, you'll be right back in here. So um, go ahead and replace them all. I will tell you, this is a pretty common thing for monitors. Um, the boards are typically pretty good. The um, you know the drivers and whatnot pretty good. The the uh, fluorescent strips along each side usually last forever. Nine times out of ten, when you have a monitor go out, it is the capacitors inside of these things. Sometimes it could be a few other components on the board that, when the capacitors go out, cause these other components to go out. Sometimes it's a diode, maybe. Sometimes it's a little uh, power transistor. But um, if it's still working like mine was, nine times out of ten, it's uh, still the uh, still the capacitor. Um, I will tell you that my son and I have gone to the uh, dump, uh, the landfill, many times on the weekends to take off our garbage because I live out in the middle of uh, rural nowhere. And um, there's been many times I've been there and I've seen great big TVs sitting over um, to be thrown away at the electronics pile. And my dump is nice enough to let us take away the electronics if you wish to. And so, uh, let's see, last Christmas I picked up a nice 40-inch uh, flat panel um, monitor that was just about brand new, it looked like, maybe a year old that had died. Somebody threw it out. My son and I um, basically recapped that thing, and he's using it in his college dorm room, and we've got about a whole 10 bucks in that in that thing or less. So, uh, something definitely to, to keep your eye on. Don't, when you got a monitor goes bad, don't... Uh, don't chunk it. Uh, these things are repairable. Let me get into this thing a little further. I'm going to remove some various pieces. A lot of them are not actually screws. They just, you can see this thing here is kind of flimsy and loose. Some of these things are designed to snap and like right here, this one, uh, these tabs, it'll snap over these tabs and then it locks under here. But we'll get we'll get all these, uh, get these covers off. All right, we got one end piece off here. It wasn't, wasn't too bad. It just kind of snapped off of there. And as you can see, there's a couple um, connection points here, and these things will just basically unplug um, on each one of these, and uh, probably likely maybe two on the other side, just like it. Um, it kind of feeds the high voltage to the uh, to the fluorescent lights that uh, that light up the back screen on this thing. Um, we're going to keep taking it apart. Unplug these, and uh, if you'll notice, I, um, I made a little note card here, which I do a lot of times might be hard to see but you see um, I, I drew the buttons at the bottom here of this square that I've got um, you see the buttons on this square <laughs> and then uh, I drew two little connectors over here and I basically said blue pink pink blue so I know what order these little connectors right here that uh, have different colors to them plug back in from that point once I had those two connectors loose it was as simple as grab this side of this thing and lift the whole thing up and if you'll notice, this whole thing is going to come off. I did undo this connector right here. Um, it's as simple as squeeze these two, two ends together. And then um, um, once you got that, one more connector back here that's still connected. And you can move the monitor, I mean the actual LCD, out of the way. And we're just dealing with the uh, circuit boards here. Good news. Came right out. Um, you know, I showed you I disconnected this other little connector. Let me show you what you got to do to get these boards out. You got a screw here, screw here, screw here. Um, this one comes out pretty easy. This one's a little more difficult. You got a screw here, one screw on this side. If you'll notice, there's really no other screws on the other side of this board. And the reason being is because these screws right here on the uh, the VGA connections, um, you have to take out all four of these, and that's what holds the rest of this board in place. And then both these things should just come out. And there is an umbilical cord between these two. You can unplug it one right here once you uh, get ready to do that. A few more tips here. Um, and I've picked these up recently and I absolutely love them. These are really small little um, magnetic trays. And I've got, I, bought a, I bought a pack of four of them. But um, I'm really liking the fact that I can kind of uh, separate these out. So all the screws for this board up here 
screws for this board I put here, the screws for the chassis I put there. Um, just makes keeps things nice and clean, um, separated so I don't have to wonder whether, oh, did I use the wrong screw in the wrong place or whatnot. The other thing was, you know, this little tool here um, was just a, uh, you know, a godsend on removing these little, um, little nuts. If they fit right in there and uh, specifically made for that size. But um, these are the YI or WIA, uh, so I'm not sure which one are. Made in Germany, really high-end uh, screwdriver set. I've got the entire set here. Um, you can buy it in a bundle. Um, I will tell you that these, you know, and then they're sorted nice. They come with this nice little stand. Um, I use the heck out of these things and uh, I always know where they're at. They're always in order and um, I think you can get a set of these for about, I want to say 190 bucks with the stand and everything. But um, if you're going to get serious about this stuff, uh, good tools are the key to everything. So I'm going to get this board out. I did notice there's one more little connector over here. Basically that blue wire that I showed you earlier that came way around. Um, it plugs in right here. I'll have to disconnect it and we'll get this board out. First board is out. If you notice, this thing's got some really small kind of surface mount style capacitors on this thing. Rarely do I see those go bad. Um, you know, I do a visual check of all this, but uh, I usually don't replace those. But um, over here, board two. See this great big power supply capacitor here? Um, it's one that I always replace. It looks pretty good on the end. <clears throat> but then, ta-da! You'll notice these three power supply capacitors right here. If you'll notice the tops of these things are black from where they've been seeping out. They're split open where the little seams come together right here. All three of them you can see. And if you could see the edges of them here, which might be a little tough, you can see that they've got you know, gook coming out of the top of them. Uh, those would be my culprit right now. So here's what I'm going to do. Replace these three this one, these two, and this one. And uh, we'll consider this thing recapped at that point in time. Maybe better give you a better picture of this, the stuff seeping out the top. And if you'll notice, I wrote down all the values I need. And I think I'm being summoned upstairs. I'm gonna stop the video for now and pick it up here in a little bit. Oh, I'll show you a little bit of the other side of the shop here. Um, this is basically the other part of the, the uh, you know, I've kind of got my office down here, then I've got a workshop area, and then kind of a storage area down in the basement. But these are um, uh, radial electrolytics, 35 to 100 volts, and uh, I use a lot of these and a lot of, a lot of you can see I've got uh, probably 40 different sizes, types, and I just label and put them in bags here. And I always buy really good stuff, so like Nippon, um, Nikikon, um, you know, really, uh, Rubicon, fairly good stuff. Um, that's what I usually pick up. These would be the 0 to 34 volts. There again, you see kind of uh, Mickey Con. Uh, I've got some kits here. There are a variety of sizes. And then I've got my radial capacitors over 100 volts. I uh, don't use as many of those, but I'll show you what I found out of all this. Um, so we needed two 680 microfarads at 25 volts. Well, what I had was some 680 at 35 volts, which will work fine as long as they don't get too tall and get in the way of uh, you know closing the cover on these things. You'll be fine. I needed 150 microfarad here at 450 volts. Um, got those here in the bag. Um, I needed uh, two 820s. At 25 volts, I've got the 820s at 25 volts. Um, these are KMDs, which are a really good brand as well. And then one 330 at 25 volts, and I don't have a 25 volt. I've got 63 volt, which is just fine. And uh, we'll get these put in there. All right, I'm gonna go get back over there and uh, install these things. Okay, as you can see, I got the first three out, and it was just as simple as. Uh, you know, putting the solder here on one lead and kind of reaching on the other side and bending the cap one way like that. Putting the, the solder the solder iron on the other lead and then bending it like that. Sometimes you have to come back and touch the first one again. But then they just kind of pop out and uh, as you can see they left holes open here. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes you may have to use a little solder sucker to, uh, to get your holes open again. And it's just a matter of, uh, you know, aligning the negative, you know, I wrote on the board here. 
um, you know, negative, negative, negative. Didn't know that underneath the things they had them marked, but they do. Um, and so you can see I dropped this new capacitor in, stuck it through, uh, brought it out the other side. You can see the lead sticking through here. And then I just used a uh, soldering iron, just touched a bead of solder on each side. Um, it's not a two-sided circuit board, so you don't have to worry about the uh, solder on the other side. And we'll just use a set of uh, little tin snips here now and uh, snip these off right down here at the board, just like so. And at this point, we will, uh, that capacitor is replaced. We'll move on to all the others. You can see I've uh, you know, finished recapping the board and I've dropped them both back in. Um, got the umbilical cord here connected between these two. Still got to connect this connection and uh, this long one here. We're going to drop it back in the chassis now. Um, if you remember, we had a screw here, 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 here. Um, and then the ones over here on this side, the little uh, nuts that um, are also double duty for the uh, for the 9-pin uh, DIN connection and the uh, SVGA. We're going to put it back together and I'll show you what happens. You'll notice this thing just kind of sits down in here. It goes up around the top corner up here, you can see. Uh, same over here, it just kind of sits over the top. Um, this little thing here will feed and we'll, we'll connect it here in a second. Um, I'll have to connect this back in right here. Plug it in well. Snap. It then feeds down and around. As you can see here. Goes into this little socket. We'll have to do a little bit of routing here. You can see how this cable kind of routes down and around here. So we got it routed around now. All down through here. Um, got this plugged in, it just slides right straight in here and snaps in. Um, then you see this thing kind of sits down on that braided on, on the cord a little bit. Then really all you got left here are these uh, high voltage connections. If you remember back over here on my little notebook, I had wrote down uh, blue pink, so I'll remember which one goes where. The blue one goes here, and the pink one goes right here. And then this one is pink blue. So the pink one will go right here. And the blue one will go on the top. And then this little thing here snaps underneath that. And this snaps underneath that. And we're ready to uh, snap the back cover back on this thing, believe it or not. And then the uh, <coughs> what you have happen is the uh, this is the stand that holds the monitor. Those the screws right there. If you see, they'll actually come up through the bottom here and mount to this, which kind of holds this whole frame together then. Um, at that point, it, and it, it secures this part to the next part. Let's get it snapped back together. Okay, as you can see, snapped it back around together here on this end first. Then kind of snapped it all together down on this end. I put the one, there's another screw under that, two, three screws back in here. And then I slid the, uh, the mount base up under here. And put in one, two, three more screws. And uh, this thing's back together. Let's plug it up and see what happens. All right, here for the moment of truth. Um, let's hit the power button here. And ta-da! We have uh, icons and uh, <laughs> no flickering at this point. So problem solved. I just showed you how quickly you can repair your own monitor when it dies. Honestly, guys, if it wouldn't have been for making the video, I could have done the whole process in 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Um, probably about um, $8 in capacitors as well. I yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm trying to pick some more good audio stuff to come your way. Um, got a piece or two here I'm waiting on me, so we'll get to them next and, uh, and get you going. Thanks, everybody.